Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So as promised, I said we would do another page in RJ's wonderful book, Lost and Found. I adore this book. And um, what I thought we would do is do um, some of the page in um, entirely in um, alcohol markers. I'm using the Ahuhu Honolulu series here. But then also introduce our incredible set of Amazon Basic pencils. I love these pencils. They're soft and smushy and they're just brilliant. So I thought that's what we'd do. Um, and the page I've chosen because we're using alcohol markers is, no, got the page wrong again, is this one. It's a good job I checked, isn't it? Because I wouldn't have had my plastic sheet behind. So I, do, I thought we'd do this one, the key to my heart. Um, it's a beautiful page. And for blending alcohol markers, it just seemed perfect. There's some little spaces, but spaces where we can stop so that we don't get those horrible alcohol marker lines. And I'll go through that with you. So some of the page um, we are going to do just entirely with alcohol markers. So um, if you don't have the Honolulu series, this was they, they were sent to me and I did a review on them and I really like them. So I wanted to just sort of have a play with them. My hands are quite sore being back at work and things. So I thought we'd have a play and we'd do detailing with pencil. But if you don't have these, you'd be able to follow along just using the colours from any alcohol sets you've got. So if I bring you in, where should we start? Let's start over this side here. And I have got three colours. I've got um, R7 Old Red, R6, let me just see on my chart, um, uh, R6 Rose Red, and then I've got um, Vermilion R2. So that's what the colour I'm going to do the background in. So I'm going to start with Vermilion, and on these particular pens, they have a brush tip, and then they have the fine point tip. Now, there is some fine areas to go in here, so I'm going to use the fine point to go round them. And I've got my thick piece of acetate behind to protect the other pages, because it will leak through. And I'm just going to start filling in around these little leaves. Now I kind of just sort of dot it in there and let the alcohol marker sort of spread out because this is Amazon paper and it will it will spread. So I'm just using it really lightly and just sort of tapping it in there if you can see that. Um, concentrating, sorry folks, it's um, a really good page to practice on because like I said, there's lots and lots of small areas so we can do a little bit of colouring and stop without it, um, I was getting them, you know when it dries out you get those lines, you can get rid of them but there we go. There we go. So I am going to fill in the entire background with this beautiful R2 Vermilion. So I'm sure um, any alcohol marker set that you've got, this is the 120 set that I was um, kindly gifted to do a review with. I'm sure that you'll have a bright red, a medium red, and a dark red in that set. Alcohol markers for reds are really usually quite good. <clears throat> so I'm just very carefully going round here, and then I'll show you what I'm going to do. With the other the other two pens, there we go. 
after we've got that little section done, I can stop because the lines stop on there. Now, because it's Amazon paper, you don't want to oversaturate it because it will spread out. So give it a few seconds to dry in between adding new colours. So now I'm going to go in with... Um, my eyesight is really bad. R6, which is the rose colour. And again, I'm going to use the fine tip. And I'm going to go round the edge and just darken that up in some areas. So under here, give that a little bit of shadow there. And under this petal. Yeah, so give it a few seconds in between putting your next layer on because the pa this is it's not alcohol marker paper obviously and it spreads out really quickly so you do have to be really quite careful okay so we've got a little bit of that and then our old red we're just going to put in the deepest of spaces so I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to drop a little bit in between that petal and then I'm going to go back to my pink and just dot that in and go over the top of it so it blends. There we go. And then we can go back to our vermilion, go over that line and it will just blend it through. A bit like we do with our pencils, just go back over it. Just be careful not to oversaturate it. There we go. And we're just going to pick some, for that old red, um, we're just going to pick some spots that I think would be really dark. Just sort of add a little bit of drama to our page. So like up here, maybe a little bit down here. And then go back in with the mid-tone and just cross over that again. I'm just sort of dabbing it on so I don't over soak the page and it doesn't run into everything. There we go. And it will just add a little bit of drama to our page. What do you think, folks? We could even put a little bit around the top here. If you want to, if you want to be brave, we could even add a little bit of drama up here. Stop that in there. Maybe a little bit more under here. Okay. Then go back in with our mid tone. Oh no. And just overlap it. And bring that out a bit. There we go. Look at that. Doesn't that look cool? Very, very little effort. And then you'll have to wait, obviously, to see the... Let me bring you in just a tad closer. You have to wait to see the full effect when it's drying. Now I'm going to go back over with our vermilion and just blend that through. Yeah, so you have to wait till the page dries to see the full effect. There we go. Isn't that cool? It's going to look amazing, isn't it, I think? This beautiful heart. There we go. So, in true Lucy just adds colour style, I'm going to go off. I'm going to cover the entire thing in vermilion. And then I'm going to go round the edges with the two darks. So I'm going to go all the way round the edges. Um, and then I might come back and show you where I'm going to put some shading in. But... Or I can just show you close up, but it will be the same three colours. All right, folks. So as soon as I've completed that, I'll come back and we'll do some more. This is how far I've got. And I thought I'd pop back on and do a little bit more with you. Um, so what I've done is the shadow coming this side of the objects on this side. So we're going to have to do the same this side. So it looks as if the light's coming this way, if that makes sense. So I thought I'd do a little bit more with you and just show you like how I did the key in there. It's the same as we did, but I did feel that I rushed off a little bit quickly. So if I zoom you back in and we can pick the key in particular if we want. 
So we're going to pick, um, let's go in with the darkest first, which is our R7 Old Red. Tell you what, I do have trouble reading them. Not the codes, but the actual name is quite hard to see. So I'm just going to run a very thin line of this old red round here. Maybe not all the way, a little bit maybe under that. I'm just sort of dotting it rather than running it. And then I'm taking the number six, which is, I can't see it, I'll have to look at it on my chart, uh, rose red. And then I'm just going to go back over that and bring that out a little further. It's my phone, I do apologise, I'll move it out of the way. And then we'll go back in with our... Um, Vermilion. Just colour back over that. And then let that dry. And then we do it all again in these little spaces. So I'm not going to lie to you, it does take quite a bit of time. So if we pick like this branch here, this I've gone in with number six, which is our, I think, rose one. The numbers will be on the screen, Lucy, so stop stressing. So it's our mid colour. And then we're going to go in with our dark colour. I'm just going to run that up where I want that shadow in. Okay. And then we'll go back over with Vermilion. And these little tiny thin grasses I'll do with our beautiful Amazon pencils. There we go. So um, I'm just sort of following that rule, really, that I've done it as if the light's coming this way. So everything's going to be shadowed this side, this side instead. I don't know whether that's right or wrong. That's how my brain is doing it. And I think it looks cool. So that's what I went with. Um and I am going to run around the outside. So I hope that makes sense and makes things a little bit easier for you. I felt like I'd rushed off before, but you can see the difference between the flat vermilion on the page and then the, the ones that have got the shading in. And it's so easy to do. It looks really effective, like you've spent hours and hours doing Well, I have. It does take a long time. <laughs> but um, it does look really effective instead of just the flat vermilion colour, doesn't it? So I'm going to go off and finish that now. I feel a little bit better about having talked you through those gaps. And I should do round the key this side. Um, and again, the same with this key. Um, and all the way around the edge, I should do darker. And then we'll meet back up and we'll do the next bit. All right, my friends, I'll see you in a second. Okay, guys, I've done as much of the heart as I think I'm going to do in alcohol marker anyway because there's some little tiny intricate bits that we might need to get in with pencil. And I fluffed up and went over some little bits there, but never mind. So, flowers next, and I've got some blues, some gorgeous blues here. Let's come in. Okay, well, we've got a good focus on this one, so let's do that one. So I've got three colours. I've got B64, which is Indian Red. PB1 Sky Blue and Blue Grey 3. So I'm going to go in with our darkest first and I'm going to use the fine end. And I am going to, can you see, let me just slide you over so I don't lose you. I'm just going to flick in a little bit of, and I'm actually going to fill the centre in. Because I can't be doing with, um, we could always go over that with something else, but like a, um, uh, out, uh, Acrylic pen is what I'm thinking. Um, yeah. So and now I'm going in with our mid-tone. I'm just going to flick that colour in. Leave the edge sort of uneven. And then I'm going in with our palest tone. And I'm going to mix all that in. I'm going to go over the whole thing. 
Now we have to wait till that dries. And I've just dragged a load of red in. Can you see that? Brilliant. I probably should have left the background till last, but let it dry. And we can always use our, what they call the blender pen. We can always use that to lift color if necessary. We'll see how it dries. Let me just put a piece of paper under there. I wonder if it's... I'm just going to put a piece of paper under there because I wonder if it's picking ink up off of my um, acetate. Could well be. So mid-tone, flick that colour in. Go back over that one while it's still, while I've still got the pen out. Just so it helps those blends along. And then we'll go in with our light colour. Go back over the whole thing. And then let that dry. And then we can do any um, adjustments to our blending once it's dry. But uh, like I said before, don't oversaturate the page because you'll just either tear the paper or it will spread out into areas you don't want it to go to. Such good fun blending these um, markers or blending alcohol markers in general. Because you initially like that blend, I was like, oh, that's not going to work. What have I done? But as it dries and you play with it, you'll see them just sort of merge together almost seamlessly. It's brilliant. I hope I've picked up the right pen. Yeah, I have. Okay. So while we let that dry, yeah, it's quite a lot of ink gone through. While we let that dry, we'll do another one. Let's do this one. I'm gonna do the center dark blue. And then a little bit of that Indian blue. Then our next colour, which is sky blue. No. Yeah, sky blue. Because it's been a very long, we're only Tuesday and it's been a very long week at school already. We've been back, um, be a week tomorrow and I'm exhausted. Just coming straight home and sleeping. It's hard work. Mm -hmm. And then uh, our palest colour. We'll leave them to dry and then we can use some pencils just to sort of enhance that blend. So going in with this one on here, and I'm going to do a little bit of dark blue up that edge. Then our mid-tone. And then our pale. There we go. I'm going to do that again. Just going to turn you around. I'm going to have a little bit of dark up this edge to separate those petals. Flick some of that Indian blue in. Do the same with our sky blue. And then we'll put that beautiful blue gray in. Okay. 
And then the last one, a little bit of dark blue up there. And then go over it with our pale colour. Okay, now hopefully this one should be dry. Let's revisit that. I'm really not happy with that, how that blend came out. So I'm going to leave the dark one out for a minute. And I'm going to go back in with our um, sky blue. Let's get you on camera first. Getting too excited and carried away. So I'm going to add some more flicks to that light colour where we've blended it out. And go over that original dark blue. And we can just sort of mess about with it until we're happier with the blend. But like I say, it, it's not the end of the world if you're not, because blue pencils will just go straight over the top. So if I'm not happy when it dries, I can put pencil over the top. I think that's better. And then our light color. I think what I've done was put too much of the light colour in and not enough of the dark, of the mid-tone. So let's go in with this one here. Let's put more mid-tone in there. There we go. A bit more maybe up here. Because that blue grey washes it out a bit more, I think, on that one. There we go. And then we'll add the blue grey on top. There. What do you think, folks? They'll dry um, and we'll have a look, see if we might need some pencil over the top just to sort of define those areas on them. So I'm going to go off and do all the blue flowers. I'm going to do every flower on here blue apart from the rose. The rose is going to be different. Well, actually, we could do that now, couldn't we? So I've got three colours then for the rose. I have got P4, which is lavender, P3, which is pastel violet, and then I've got cool grey zero zero. And the cool grey, because there isn't in this 120 set a really very pale um, lavender colour, um, I've used the cool grey and that lifts some of this colour. Okay, so we're going to take lavender and we're going to put that in. And I'm just trying to I'm just streaking it in because that kind of helps when I blend the next colour in. And then I'm going to take um, pastel violet, and I'm going back over that original colour and pulling this up. And then we'll take a little bit. Oh, actually, we have to fill this up. I forgot about that. Sorry. We fill up the entire petal. So I've done those little streaks for nothing, but never mind. Fill up the entire petal. And then we go back in with our cool grey, where we want that colour lifted. And then you have to wait for it to dry to have a look at the effect. Right there, it doesn't look like it's going to do anything, but it will. And it looks hideous, I know, but it won't. We'll get it. 
<clears throat> on this side. And we'll put this in. And we'll take our grey. That should just knock back that colour. In fact, let's go over the whole thing to help it blend. Right, we're going to let that dry. I know it looks hideous, but we'll we'll sort the blend out, I promise. Okay, then we're going in with this petal here. Bring a bit of that in. I've just left a tiny white gap there because it's spreading out. And I'll grey over the top of that. All right. So we're going to go back in. So I'm going to take the brush side of this, our dark marker, and pull that through. And then I'm taking the brush side of the mid-tone one and push that in. There we go. Go back to this, but I know it takes a lot of, of playing with, but it's good fun, folks. It's good fun. Flick some of this dark in here with the brush. Then we'll do the same with the mid tone. Here we go. And then we'll take the brush of the cool grey and we'll just flick some of that in at the top. There we go. And then we have to sit and wait and let that dry. So I've got a mammoth task now. I need to go and complete the flowers. They don't look as bad as they did. I'm not entirely happy with them. They didn't look like my practice one. But um, I will complete the flowers. We will probably put some pencil over that just to, just to neaten that off. But that's easy enough. The rose is drying pretty nice. Okay, I'll meet you back up when I've done that. See you in a sec. Okay, so I've finished the rose and the flowers. The blue flowers are going to have detailing on. They're not going to just stay like that. Um, so what I want to do is look at the rose leaves and the stone round the door, and then we'll do the um, the vines. I'm going to do them in wood colour. All right, anyway, let's let's come in and do one element at a time, Lucy. Element at a time. So I'm going to use two colours for the rose leaves. They're going to be different to the others. And I've got blue-green one, which is turquoise green, and blue-green five, which is dolphin blue. So I'm going to use the fine tip for this and I'm going to go in and give it, this is a really nice dark green. So because we did like as if the light was coming from this way, we'll make this side darker. So this can have more of the dark green. And then we'll blend it with our next colour. Gonna go back over that dark green 
and push those two colours together. Like that. We're going to do the same for this one. Could use the brush here. Make life a bit easier and quicker. Go down to there. We'll make this side darker, like we said. They're so juicy. And then we'll go in with, let's do the brush side on this one. We'll go back over that. I'll switch to my fine tip. then what we should have is a really good car shadow cast with those two colours. So I'm going back with my fine tip to do this one. A little less dark on this one. Okay. And then in with our dolphin blue. It's a gorgeous colour. We'll just go over that blend line. Make sure we really push those two together. Do the same on here. There we go. So that we'll let them dry, but they're going to be really dark in comparison to the other leaves that I'm going to do. Oops. Put them back in order. Now we're going to have a look at the stone around the door. So I'm just going to do the door frame in these colours. And um, I have got cool grey 2 and blue grey 3. So let me just test these. Which is my... Hang on. Uh, blue grey 3 and cool grey 2. Right, cool grey 2 is our darkest. So I'm going to go in, we will use pencils as well to enhance this, but I'm going to go in around the frame. Around the door frame and bring it out like that. Then we'll put a little bit of this um, blue grey in, blend the two together. So we get a kind of nice sort of stone effect. And then when we put pencils on the top, that will make that even better. Like that. Make sure we get enough of that. And then in with our blue. They just blend so well together. And then you're not going to have such a flat looking stone with two very samey greys. Such a cool sound, isn't it? The markers on paper. Okay, then we'll switch to our blue. There we go. And we'll let that dry. Okay, that's that for now. Um, let's do the, um, the vines. Yeah, let's do the vines. That would be good. So I've got three colours for the vines. I've got Y12, <coughs> oh, excuse me, Y12, which is mahogany, Y9, yellow ochre, and I've got warm grey three. So I'm going in with my fine tip here. And because we've got the shadow this side, I'm going to make this side the darkest. So I'm going in with um, mahogany down this edge. Be careful here. Those vines we're going to have to colour, I think, with 
pencil. Can you see? Move it up a bit. So we're going to have a dark side over here. Let's bring that all the way up here. And under that flower. Okay, then we're going to switch to our yellow ochre. And I'm using the fine tip again. Going back over that initial colour. And then bringing that out. And then just leave space for our third colour. This. And then we'll go in with that um, warm grey three. And of course we have to let that dry. It doesn't look much now, but it will dry much lighter. I hope I've done that correctly. Mm. Well, it's a bit late now, isn't it, folks? But I reckon I'd used a lighter colour, but we'll see. <clears throat> we'll see. It looks all right, I think. Oh, it's too late now, anyway. That, that's the combination I'm going to have to go with. But you could use a much lighter edge there. Let's, we'll see how it dries. No, no worries. Let's just keep a cool head, Lucy. I'd laid them out and then, because um, I got so tired, um, I went off to bed and I thought, well, I've got the, all the colours sorted. I can just come back on camera and um, do it with you. But then because I've played and I used some of the same colours for different things, um, they might have got slightly mi mixed up. But I tell you what we'll do. We'll just stick with it. I reckon they might have been the... Never mind. Never mind. Lucy, go with the flow. There's nothing you can do about it now, my lovely. Just keep going. I think it will look all right anyway, because the red's so dark. I think it will look cool. It'll be fine. And we have to let it dry yet anyway. That'll be all right. I think that'll look nice. Stop stressing out, Lucy. Right. So I'm going to do from the actual frame of the heart. So this bit, I'm going to do our darkest on the inside. Here. And then we'll get lighter as we go towards the edge. Haven't left much for that grey there, but that's okay. All right, so let's move up and do this bit. So I'm going to go dark round the key. I'm going to come up very carefully. All the way up. There's nowhere to stop, so I'm just going to stop there. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to see everything I'm doing. Same as we did before, same colours. And then our yellow ochre. Mind our leaf. So I'm overlapping and bringing that yellow ochre out. And then we can just leave a small edge for that warm grey. And it kind of lifts that and kind of makes it look rounded so it's not flat.
There. I think that's going to look awesome when all that's coloured in. Actually, I'm really pleased with that combination. It's much, much darker than my practice one. So I must have mixed this colour up, the warm grey, with something. But I actually really like it. So I'm going to go off and finish my happy mistake. <laughs> and um, then we're going to meet back up and we'll do the leaves. And the keys I'm going to do like... Um, what do you call it? Um, brass when they've oxidized. So you get that sort of turquoise in them. These old style keys. This one I'll do slightly different. All right, my lovelies. See you in a sec. OK, so this is as far as I've got. And I love the combination of the browns with that grey. So it turned out <coughs> really well. I cannot, for the life of me at the moment, decide on the combination for the leaves. I'm thinking that I might like to use the dark combination on the bigger leaves and then introduce some fresher greens, brighter greens for these little ones. But we'll see. So at the moment, we're going to focus on the actual door, not the hinges. And I've got um, uh, brown grey, which is Y11. I've got warm grey 3 and warm grey 1. And we are going to focus on this door. So, taking the fine tip, I am going to take the darkest of our colours, which is the brown grey, Y11. And I'm going to run down the edge, the door here, of each like plank. Then we're going to introduce warm grey three. I thought this was going to be a quick and easy video for us to do. Alas. <laughs> and then we're going to introduce our palest colour, which is warm grey one. I'm just going to run over that. I don't know why I always think, oh, that'll be a good video. It'll be nice and quick for my lovely subscribers. And then, yeah, this happens. But it's okay. All right. That'll dry and it looks, hopefully, it will look much better. The paper on here is different. I've been using copy paper. Um, to practice, and uh, it's the colours are actually coming out much different. But I think it will be okay. So I'm gonna, again, going to put that in. Then we're going to go in with warm grey three. I think you get the the gist. And then uh, warm grey one. Going over that blend a little bit. There we go. Looks awful at the moment, but hopefully it will dry and it won't. Oh, and I didn't zoom you in. I'm so sorry. Oh, my goodness. Let's do another one together. Oh, that's what happens when you go back to work and you've had a full day at work. Right, so um, it's very saturated, so we'll have to let it dry to see the effect. But I go in with Y11... Dab it in there. Where I want that. Um, like the planks of the wood to show. 
Then I'm going to go over that with the warm grey three. And I've just used that yellow, um, what colour did I say it was? Brown grey actually. I've just used that to change the tone of the grey. I'm going to use the pale colour to go over it all. There we go. All right. So I'm going to go and finish the whole door and let it dry so you can see the effect because it looks pretty cruddy at the minute. <laughs> and then I'll be back and we'll do the um, the brasses that I want to do. All right, see you in a second. So I've done it and it's dry. I'm quite pleased with how it's turned out, actually. So I've got a nice soft wood colour so it doesn't sort of blend in with this. It won't blend in when I do my brass tones, which is what I'm really looking forward to. But before I change my mind, I'm going to get these big leaves done and I'm going to use the, the colours that we use for the rose leaves, but an extra colour in there just to help blend in. I wanted them dark here because of the shadow, um, but we're going to use an extra colour. So I've got blue green one, which is turquoise green, blue green five, or sorry, green five, which is turquoise ice blue and then green six which is dusty jade green so those three beautiful colors so let's come in so i'm gonna do i don't want to come in too far because i want to get i'm going to do all the big leaves these little ones i'm going to leave and obviously those um grasses and we'll introduce some sort of olives maybe with pencils for those so let's take our darkest, which is BG1. I'm going to get my fine tip and I am going in. Let's go in. Don't hesitate anymore, Lucy. I was just going to do like fresh green colours, but I think it would just look a little bit odd. Then our mid-tone. And I'm overlapping that first colour. And I'm concentrating on the darkest bit being this side. And then we'll get our lightest colour and go over all that. There we go. Gosh, I hope I've done that right. <clears throat> it's a bit late now, isn't it, folks? <laughs> But I think that will go so well with those. Um, and it won't look so odd then. I mean, the page is, gonna, is like really nice, dark, rich colours, isn't it? So I want to sort of keep that effect. <clears throat> and I'm going to bear in mind where we put the shadow on our... Um, where we put the shadow on our heart. So if we remember this side is darker here, so like the light's shining this way, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna go off and do all the big leaves and then we will meet back up and do the next bit before I change my mind. All right, folks, see you in a sec. Right, so I've done all that and I've filled in the little, um, what's in there? Oh, <laughs> I've filled in the the little vines and the blue flowers the same down there with the same colours. So I can't decide on these the combination for these last leaves at the moment. So we're going to concentrate on the keys and we're going to do this key first in two grey colours. So if I can bring you in, because that's quite tiny, that little key. And I've just got um, Cool Grey 2 and Cool Grey 0, 0. And I'm going to go in with our darkest grey, which is Cool Grey 2. 
around the this side because that's where we said the shadow was. I'm going to put that in there. And then we're going to blend that with 00. zero. And then we'll use pencil over the top. So that will dry different colours. I know it looks the same at the moment, but it will. And then we can use pencil to make it better. Right, let's have a look at this big key here. And I've got two colours again. Now, you're going to go, oh my God, Lucy has absolutely lost the plot. But it works. I'm looking for like oxidised bronze. That's I think the word I'm looking for. Not brass, is it? Which one? Whichever one goes turquoise. So I've got Y8, which is olive yellow, and I've got G9, which is meadow green. I know, you're going to be thinking that she's absolutely, let's do this key, the big one. She's absolutely lost the plot. Right, I'm going to pull you over this way so I can get my words in here without being in the way. So I'm going to use Y8, again the fine side, and I'm going to make this side dark. This is like our bronze colour. And then what I'm going to do is bring that out in sort of random order. And then I'm going to just slot in this beautiful um, meadow green. Now you have to wait to see it dry before you'll see the effect, but it is so cool, trust me. Honestly, it looks really cool. Okay, let's do this side. So back to our... first colour. Can't think what it's called. And so, I'm just going to sort of... choose a random pattern and fill it in. And then take that beautiful meadow green and when it dries um, it will go obviously go much lighter than this but when it dries it just looks like sort of uh, that oxidization that you get on a key oh, on a key on metal so I'm going to go around here And then just fill in any gaps with this green colour. Okay. Hopefully that will dry lighter. It, the, this paper is making it look a lot darker. So I'm going to do all the big keys like that. So let's do this one down here. So this is our dark side. So I'm going to put that in. I think the more random the spots, the better. Like this. So it looks aged and weathered. We can go over that brown. That might lift it a little bit. we go. I'll go back over that brown. Yeah, that's the mistake I made earlier. I didn't go over it with the turquoise and it lifts the colour. Turquoise, the green. Here we go. 
Okay, we'll let that dry. Um, so I'm going to come out. I kind of look a bit lost now in this dark page. I hadn't intended the page to be so dark, but like I say, they'll dry lighter and then um, we can finish them off. So I'm going to go off and do these three keys the same and those two, those, yeah, those three keys. And then we'll meet back up when that's done. See you in a second. Okay, we're nearly there. We need to do some pencil work. Um, and we're going to look at these keys because they've kind of blended in a little bit. So if I bring you in, and I did do the brasses on the door with the same thing. So if we come in and have a look at this key, I've got the Amazon Basic pencils, which I mentioned. And we are going to use Van Dyke Brown 563. Brown ochre, 556, five, and turquoise green, 538. I love these pencils, by the way. If you're looking for a squishy pencil, these do it. So I'm going to take the Van Dyke Brown and I'm just going to enhance that dark edge just slightly, not overboard at all. Just put a little bit more. Maybe some depth in where there might be a bit of shadow. Right around there, like that. And then we can use the brown ochre just to blend that out. Yeah, I really love these pencils. I'm so glad I, I was sent them. So I'm just going over with the brown ochre. Just enhance that a little bit, and then we're going to take this gorgeous turquoise and we're going to plop that in. I'm going to do it quite carefully because it's very bright, but I just want to lift this colour because our keys kind of got lost a little bit. So we can bring that back out. And it should colour straight over the top because it's alcohol markers. So then we can just blend a little bit of that brown ochre in, just lightly. And then our Van Dyke Brown, just for some darker areas. There, so that should help, not too much work. Let's do this one. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown up that edge. Just where I want it darker. I'll just bring out the key a little bit more. I don't know, I just felt it was lost a little bit. So brown ochre, and that's a really good match for that marker. So we can just bring that out. And then that beautiful turquoise. And just randomly drop that in and then instantly that lifts that colour so our key should pop a little bit more let's do that bit and then if you've done too much we can just drop in that brown ochre over the top and break up that line there we go right let's have a look at our silver key so this side's darker we want this side darker and in here there is a bit of a divot so i'm using do apologize black oh sorry slate gray five six nine silver gray five six five and light gray five five four They've got silver print on it, so it can be quite hard to read. So I'm just going to put the darkest where like the indents of the key would be, if that makes sense. Then I'll mid-tone and pull that out.
There we go. And then our very palest one. And just blend over. These pencils are divine. They were, when I did my um, swatching and review of them, they were £13 on Amazon. They're now nearly 20 Um I think Amazon have clocked on to the fact that they are so nice and, and um, yeah, they've got a bit of a really good product there. Okay, so that's our key. Um, we are going to do some detailing. I've still got to work these out. I know, don't have a go at me. I've got a yellow Posca you could use, um, uh, any sort of acrylic pen you've got. I don't know whether Jelly Roll would go over it or not, but any sort of paint pen that you've got would. So I'm going to do it. Oh, I've got to be brave, Lucy, come on. So I'm just going to, I just want to, sort of break it up a little bit. So instead of putting pencil on, I'm just going to do some dotage. Just to add a little bit of interest and break up this blue. So I'm going to make the center of it. And the reason, yeah, center of it, let me finish what I was saying first. Make the center of it yellow. And the reason I'm using um, acrylic is because obviously we've put blue ink down there and it would be hard to cover it otherwise so and then I'm going to come up here we'll have a little dot there to kind of separate that petal out after a full or make that a bigger one messed that up didn't I So I've managed this whole page without my hand spasming and then come and do the fine detail and look what happens. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just going to go in the centre. I think this Posca is, oh, this one's called Straw Yellow. But any bright yellow. Just kind of lifts the, the how flat they looked. There. This adds a bit of deep, a bit of interest. And then there. Uh, I'm playing now and I should be, excuse me, working out our little leaf colours. Right, stop playing. <coughs> so what I'm going to do is go off. I will do my detailing in my flowers. I will go over all my brass keys and the fittings on the door um, just to enhance that colour and lift it because, like I said, I felt like it had got a little bit lost. And then um, we'll come back and I will have a plan for our, the rest of our leaf work. And then we're nearly done. I'll see you in a sec. Okay, I'm going to jump in, folks, before I change my mind. And I've got three colours for the greens. So I'm going to use the two colours we used here and then introduce a fresher green um, <clears throat> to lift things a little bit. So from darkest to lightest, I've got G5, which is turquoise, ice blue, I think that says. G6, which is, I cannot read that. <laughs> Bear with me one second. Um, come on, say hopeless with numbers and, or not numbers, words. Anise, and then GY3, which is Bud Green. Okay, and we're going to have to be very brave. So let me put my paper behind again. So if we, if I bring you in and we focus on whichever one zooms in on this one, that looks good. Okay, we're going to take our darkest green, which is um, G5. And we're going to run up the centre of this little leaf and just dab it in there so we get a little bit at the base of each of those leaves. And then our next colour, which is G6. Wrong, wrong nib. And then do the same with that. A little bit of colour in there.
And then we're going to take the beautiful um, GY3 Bud Green and we'll run over the top of all of that. And what it will do is just give us a, um, a lifted version of the original green we put down. So it just doesn't look too starkly different, but it is different, if that makes sense. So, selecting the wrong nib, down the centre and a tiny bit at the base. Then, a little bit of that next green, our mid-tone. And then, over the whole lot with our bud green. So when that dries, it should be, um, like I say, like a lifted version of this. So what we didn't do was the stonework. So while I'm zoomed in, we're going to use the same greys we used for the key. So that was slate grey, five, eight, nine, silver grey, five, six, five, and light grey, five, five, four. So I'm going to take my slate grey, which is our darkest. And I'm going to come in around the edge of this door. And I'm just really lightly putting it in there. I'm making sure I just go a little darker where those joins are in the stonework. And then I'll go in with our next grey, which is silver grey. Go over the top of that one. Bring that out in just sort of random patch again and then use our palest which is light grey and we'll just blend over that. So it should just give us a little bit more of a texture look. So I'm going to come down here with our darkest. I'm hoping that I'll get this edited and up to you tonight. Um, Although it's getting on, yeah, it's 10 o'clock now, but hopefully I will, because tomorrow I'm at work all the day, and I come home absolutely exhausted, and I'm generally, I don't laugh, but I'm generally in bed by about 5, 5.30, when I've worked all day, I just can't, I can't do it, I can't stay up, the only time that I push myself to the limit is um, the weekends, when I have, when my son and grandson come, um, but he's in bed early enough at the moment that I can see him to bed, do all the nice things and then just clear off to bed myself, you know. There we go. So we've got a little bit of stone texture there. Um, yeah, so, to make, so we don't make the video too incredibly long, I'm going to go off and do all of the rest of the greenery in that pattern, finish the stonework, and then we're going to come back and I've got the little handles to do. I want to put some dots on the hinges, is the word that I'm looking for, and then I will be back. See you in a sec. Right, we've got a few more bits that I want to do just to, just to finish off our page. Um, I've got some jelly roll pens here. So let's start with the black. Um, if I bring you in, I thought my thing would, don't do it. It was gonna stick on the tripod as usual then. So I've got my jelly roll black, it's just plain jelly roll. It's not the, um, what do you call them, the souffle ones, is it? The 3D ones, it's not one of those, mine ran out. And I'm just going to do the door knocker in black. Let's get it running. I just do it on my thumb. <laughs> there you go. And I'm going to do 
around the keyhole. This should really emphasize it and bring it out. We'll do back over the little keyhole again too. There we go. You could use anything. I don't know why I'm using Jelly Roll. but And then I'm going to put the little, like it's got little um, nails in it. Where RJ's put an indication that they might be. There we go. What's your favourite part of a colouring page? Let me know in the comments. Um, I love doing these little last detail bits to your page. It fascinates me. So there's that. And then so I don't smudge it, I am going to put some white on this rose. So here I went over. Um, you can see a little bit of red. So I'm going to use my white jelly roll. And I'm just going to give some little highlights. We are. Just how to pick those petals out and separate them. Like that. And it also covers up my mistakes. <laughs> we are. Okay, don't go too overboard with it. And then I want to, on the light side of these keys, let's do this side so I don't smudge that until that's dry. On the lighter side of these keys, I've got this like, there's a jelly roll moonlight and I've got like a turquoise colour. I absolutely love these pens and I am just going to take out the black line. And we'll leave it on the other side. Yeah. I'm going to leave it there. We'll go around here. Can you see? Have I? Yeah. And it will just pick out that green. Um, I don't want to do the other side because it's. I'm going to leave it dark, I think. We'll see. And then, of course... I have to add some stickles. What do you think to do in a page in more or less in alcohol markers? I've really enjoyed it. It's been a bit of a learning curve for me um, because I'm not used to doing a whole page like this and just minimal um, pencil. So it's a bit of a learning curve. I've enjoyed it. I really have enjoyed it. It's been such good fun. So just taking out that black line on that edge there. And then I think the key just, uh, so just helps make the key pop out just that little bit more. Because like I said, um, on the Amazon paper, the pens um, came out lighter or it could be that I hadn't done, you know, I was just doing little sections and I hadn't done that dark red background. So it could be that. <clears throat> but they just appear to be a little bit lighter. There we go. And I think that's it. Oh, we've got these ones down the bottom, which you can't see. So I'll just tilt you while I do that. And then we're going to... <clears throat> We're going to stickalize the page. It will also, as well as um, just really helping that turquoise come out on the key, it will also cover up any little boo boos that you might have, like any little bits of alcohol bleed. Don't need to worry too much about these ones down the bottom because um, they're not against that red. I think that's what's done it. 
but it does help. They're so good at uh, being opaque and covering things up. Right, leave it while the going's good, Lucy. I've learnt that lesson the hard way. Let me tip you back up and bring you out a bit. Okay, camera stop. Right, now, time to stickleize it. Diamond stickles. So I'm going to run around the edge of this heart. Let me make sure it's working. Yeah. So I am, um, this has got, um, diamond has got some like gold flecks in it. So over browns and reds, it works so nicely. So I'm just going to run around the edge of that heart. We've got to have some, we've got to have some sh shine and shimmer, haven't we, on a heart page. Okay, if we pick out the lighter edge, what do you think? I don't even know if you can pick that up. I can move my, I don't even know if you can see that. It usually picks up better when it's dry, stickles. Very delicate pieces, isn't there, in this picture? Get my practice page out the way. Right, and I'm going to turn you round just while I run up this edge. Just carefully put some little bits in between there. There we go. And we've got a stickly edge. Mm. I, mm. I have trouble stopping once I've got stickles out. But I don't think it would make much, I'll tell you what we could do. We could put it on the center of the, the yellow bit on the center of the flowers. Yes, indeed. Now, it would have been nice to have put the um, extreme Mod Podge Extreme Glitter on the heart itself, but there's so many intricate pieces. that Let's do that key, that side. So many intricate pieces that it would be difficult to do. Right, and then learn to step away, Lucy. Learn when the going's good. Okay, so let me lift it up and see if you can pick up on that. On those stickles there. Look at that. Oh, look at that shimmery goodness. Isn't that beautiful? And the, when it dries, it'll be even more stunning. I am not. Oh, don't get stuck on me. There we go. I'm not going to put a background in. I'm going to leave it like that so that I can edit it and get it up to you. I hope you've enjoyed it. I have loved playing with alcohol markers. Um, let me show you the back of the page really carefully. Look at that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. It has been really good fun. But I do like my pencils, I have to say. I do like working with pencils. But, yeah, it was really good fun. It was a good experiment to see if I could. And um, I think it worked. I hope you like it. So I have got, um, we're going to do a, a completed pages because I've got, I don't know, three or four months worth of completed pages now. All of them have got YouTube videos, so I'm going to do a completed pages. I've also been sent the most incredible gifts um, that really choked me up when I received them. And I've brought, bought um, two new colouring books myself. So we'll probably do flip throughs of those. I'm, I'm fingers crossed that the second one arrives. It's supposed to be on its way and be here any time. That's a very exciting one. And can't leave that. Look, look, look what I've done, folks. Can't leave that. That's part of the heart. Had to be stickalized. <laughs> um, yeah, two new colouring books myself, so I'm hoping that will come really quickly. Um, and then, so we've got a number of videos that I know I'm going to do because of the gifts I've been sent that are coming up. And so I'm just going to keep bombarding you folks while I have the energy 
I will be getting videos out. So I really hope you've enjoyed this. I love playing in RJ's books. And this, Lost and Found, is the most incredible book for me, I think, is the most, uh, the best one so far. I love it. So I'm going to let you go. I've rambled on en enough. Please let me know what you think. What? The, please let me know. Let me start again. What your favourite part of doing a colouring page is. I'd love to know. And um, yeah, so until we meet again in the very near future, take really good care of yourselves and I'll see you very soon. Night, night. <laughs>